So last month I got a great opportunity to create a handful of map animations for Johnny Harris's Ukraine Russia documentary and I've seen a number of questions pop up regarding the troop clusters, those Russian troop visualizations that we created. People were wondering how we put those together and it's kind of an interesting story. So a lot of people don't understand that in a workflow like this, Johnny Harris is super meticulous about his maps. He creates beautiful maps and in fact, he had already worked for probably a long time designing this particular map before it was even handed off to me to create the animations. He had already worked with another animator to create the design and look, you know, the colors as well as the blend modes, meticulously designing the borders and the stroke width. And he had actually already gone in and animated in a bunch of those troops. And you can see in the intro sequence, he includes it in the video at the beginning. He's creating these ellipse shape elements and then he's duplicating them hundreds of times. So by the time the project files were handed over to me, I had like something over 200 Russian troop layers that were all animated individually like positions. We were working on kind of a deadline. I was worried that if he wanted any changes that I would be dealing with hundreds of layers. So I pitched the idea of creating these Russian troop clusters with one individual shape layer using a ton of repeaters. So he was afraid that there wouldn't be enough variation. He was afraid that if we're animating one individual ellipse with a repeater, it was gonna look too uniform. So he, he really stressed that we needed variation in the movement of the animations. We needed variation in the size and we needed variation in the opacity. So we wanted a really dynamic look. So today I'm gonna to go over the repeater method and show you how we put that together. And the cool thing is I created some animation presets here and that's another beautiful workflow option is that you can just drop these on, change a couple of parameters and then you, get, you can really get some dynamic variation quickly. If you'd like to download the project file for this particular tutorial, that's available over at my Patreon page. I'm gonna throw in some animation presets as well. So be sure to go check it out, link in the video description. Speaking of Patreon, a big shout out to my tier three patrons, Joseph Culligan, Mike and Sandra over on YouTube at FlumiPlus1, Samir Mahdi, and Tyson the Keymaster. Thanks again, folks, for making this video possible. Okay, so I'm here inside of Adobe After Effects and I've set up this comp. This is Ultra HD 4K, has a duration of 10 seconds, 24 frames per second. Now, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go grab the shape tool and I'm gonna select ellipse and I have this kind of muted red color here and I've turned the stroke off. Now I'm gonna hold the shift key and double click on the ellipse. That'll give me this perfectly symmetrical ellipse that kind of fits to the height of my comp. And to change the size here, I'm gonna open up ellipse path and here I have size. And I'm gonna bring this all the way down to like 50 pixels to make it real small. I'm gonna zoom in here so we can see what's going on. And now I'll just rename this troop cluster one. Now the key here is repeaters. Not only repeaters, the real secret is to repeat the repeaters. And we're gonna repeat, we're gonna add like somewhere between probably four to six repeaters until I get a look what I want. What I really stress here is it's a lot of trial and error. Sometimes you're gonna, you're gonna tinker around and you're gonna not get the look that you want. This is the problem with repeaters. It's a little more random and hard to control than like if you're manually animating things. However, you can get some good variation quickly. So to add a repeater, you just go click on this add button and then now I've got my repeater here. So all the adjustments that I'm gonna be making here to parameters are pretty much almost 95% uh, of the parameters in the repeater here. I'm gonna open up this. At the top you see copies and offset. So there's three copies right now. I'll just offset this by negative one so that it's now centered up. And right here you see there's some transformation uh, parameters for the repeater. This is where you make all of your adjustments. We have anchor point, position, scale, rotation, start and end opacity. So this is all the stuff we wanna create variations for. So again, we want variation in opacity, variation in scale, and variation in uh, position. First up here for X and Y position, as I move these, you can see I'll spread these out. If I move it on the Y axis, it kind of moves these here, offsets them. One really cool thing is start and end opacity. So if I bring down end opacity, you can see this kind of fades off here, which is, gives us a pretty cool look. I can change the scale as well. Now I'm gonna grab the repeater, hold control and hit D, and now that's simply duplicated that. And let's go down here. Now that I have a second repeater, I can tweak the rotation. So I'm gonna mess with this rotation here. And I'm just gonna adjust some of the parameters between X and Y to give it a slightly different look. Maybe even bring the scale down to like 90 and change the start and end opacity 
Now let's duplicate this again, and now you can see, since I changed the rotation, every time I duplicate the repeater now, it's gonna rotate it again, which is gonna immediately, I mean, we've already got a little bit of a troop cluster here that works, but I'm just gonna keep on adding to it. So now I can push these out a little. Let's rotate it back this way. You know, I'm just changing a few options here. Set the scale to maybe 110. Okay, let's duplicate it again. And again, it's all about variation, you know, just tweak it, play with it until you get something that looks good to you. And the cool thing is we're keeping this kind of centered here, which is what I want. See, and if you're not too careful, look, I rotate a little bit. This is looking way too symmetrical. Look, all the lines are going this way. So you want to mess that up. You want to spin these around and really give it a different look here. Okay, so I've got something here. Now, so let me show you what Johnny was afraid of. He was afraid I was gonna do something like this. I was gonna go, and now I can grab the master position of this layer, and let's say we wanna move it, we wanna have it slowly, you know, moving across a border here. So if I just grab the position, and I keyframe it, you know, from left to right, look at what this looks like. It looks terrible, because it's just like a block, like moving. So we need to keyframe some of the other parameters to really make them, we wanna look like all of these little ellipses are moving at different speeds. So to really start to add some movement, I'm gonna to go to the repeater here. Let's go to the first repeater, open up the transformation properties, and position is really where you're gonna see a lot of movement here. So if I just grab this X, check this out. Look how each one's moving kind of in different directions here. So all I need to do is quickly go through the position parameter of each repeater and add some subtle movements, and that's gonna give you some real, you know, some real nice variation in movement. A quick way to do this is to go up here and type position, and that's gonna bring up all these position parameters of all the repeaters real quickly. And now I can just go here, and I can keyframe these all at the start, and then I'll go to the end, and just start to add some, you know, like subtle stuff here. Doesn't have to be anything huge. Okay, now right away, it, it, this is very subtle, but you can see that they're all moving slightly different here. So that looks a little better. We can spice it up even more. Let's add a little bit more movement here. Maybe make one a little more dramatic and fast. There we go. Now we got some more dynamic movement. You can also do this to rotation. So I'm going to search keyword rotation. And let's see what happens if I start to spin around. It's not gonna do anything for the first repeater because you just have that one ellipse, so it's not gonna do much. So here, if I start to adjust rotation here on any of these additional repeaters, you're gonna see some, some changes pretty quickly. And I think you wanna be more subtle with these, so. Okay, so now it looks like pretty much every individual ellipse is moving at different rates and different directions. They're all kind of moving in the same direction in general, but they're all, you know, moving in their own specific direction. So now we've got some good variation. I could duplicate this repeater again, and check out what happens if I animate this. So I can animate the anchor point, and that kind of moves these. So if I say, so let's say I want like a section to arrive, you know, like I want a big portion of these to like, you know, be a little offset. What I can do is I can animate the anchor point, and let's move this back a little bit and then have it offset like this. And now a huge group of these are gonna be moving at different rates here. And let's, uh, let's give these a really different look. So let's maybe, I can even rotate these as well. And you can come up back to the ellipse path and you can change the size and it's gonna give you some, you know, let's say that these are just a little too big we can bring these down, and then you can add some effects to it. So let's say I'm going to add my favorite effect of all time, Deep Glow. This is a premium plugin. If you want to get it, I'll put an affiliate link down in the video description. Uh, you can also go check out Saber. Um, that's a free alternative. Let's turn the radius down and the exposure maybe down to like 0.6. And you can change the blend mode here. I can change it to add to give it some kind of crazy look. I'm pretty sure we did not do this for Johnny's video. Now check this out. I've got some real variation and it's all in one layer. This still might be a little difficult to work with to make it look like um, if you're you know, you know animating in and out. Uh, and if you wanna stagger it even more, what you can do is now simply duplicate this 
and now you can go to like you can go like to the master rotation and rotate it offset it a little bit and then you can come in here to the contents and you can start to just turn some of the repeaters off so that you get a totally different variation and then let's just open up the position parameters here and now we can just offset one uh, you know by a little bit you can stagger the keyframes you can stagger the layers however you want to do it so now all I have are these two layers here and that's amazing I have all these crazy you know what is this like 100 200 I don't know so to make it even more dynamic I could add another five layers of individual just single ellipses that I animate like Johnny animated and then I have a total of seven layers but I've got like hundreds of ellipses here that look dynamic so let's look at this one here let's just look at this troop cluster so we have this troop cluster here now what I could do with this one we could just grab all of this here and then I'm gonna go save animation preset and I've already got some troop clusters here. Let's call this troop cluster two. I'll just create a new comp here and I'm gonna delete both of these. And now I'll go back to effects and presets, animation preset, user presets. And right here I've got troop cluster two. You can see I've already created some other ones. Now if I double click this, now voila, I've immediately got this. And if I hit U, you can see all the keyframes that were saved here. Now be aware that those keyframes are gonna paste uh, wherever your playhead is so that can be a little annoying you could design these in a way where they're all using expressions if I had more time that's what I would do I would use the time argument to somehow drive a lot of these animations so that no matter where you paste it you know it's going at the same speed but this is a great way to work and this is in fact how I did work on one of these animations at the end he's just like more troops more troops more troops so I created these animation presets and it was real fast um, just adding this, which is kind of stupid because if I'm paid hourly, I'm making less money. <laughs> oh, one other thing. If you're creating animation presets, you probably don't want this master position animation on there. You just want all the other keyframes. So you just want this movement so that when you apply the preset, it'll create a new shape layer, and then you can animate the position wherever you want it to go. So that would be something that you would apply later. Then you can pre-comp it and go crazy with it. In fact, if you really want to rig this up, if you're really serious about this, you would use a central graphics, the central graphics panel, and you could um, add a lot of the position and rotation parameters of each individual repeater, and then you could go crazy with the customization of it. I mean, if you're doing um, visualizations like that, that's what I would suggest. But again, if I, had, if I showed you how to do that, this tutorial would be like four hours. So yeah, if you haven't seen that video, go check it out. I'm sure you have seen it because it's got, I think it's got like over 7 million views. So you've probably already seen it. Okay, so there you have it. That's how I use repeaters to repeat the repeaters to create these Russian troop clusters. Again, the project file for this particular tutorial is available on my Patreon page as well as some of the animation presets. So if you want to check those out, follow the link down in the video description. And as always, if you enjoyed the video, be sure to hit the thumbs up button. If you want to watch more content like this, be sure to check out my Monday Maps playlist and you can subscribe to the channel and hit that notification bell and if you really love this type of content be sure to head over to my patreon uh, for the tier 2 patrons I have some exclusive tutorials that I release each month it's a lot of fun so go check it out